This is part three in our series of lectures on infinite sets, and in this lecture we're going to write the proof of the theorem that z is denumerable. So in order to prove this theorem, we have to find a bijection from n into z. That's what it means to say that z is denumerable. So let's um, explore a little bit how we might do this by doing some calculations. So we have to figure out how to map n, which we can write like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And we want to map that onto z. And I'm going to um, chop z up into two pieces. The positive natural, or the, uh, the natural numbers, a union, all of the integers, the negative integers together with zero. So what we might consider doing is also chopping the natural numbers up into two pieces. One piece we would map to this part of z, and the other piece we would map to this part of z. So a natural way to do that is to rewrite n as the union of the even natural numbers with the odd natural numbers. And then all we have to do is figure out how to map this piece to that and to map this piece to that. So let's have a look at that. If we want to map um, um, this set, 2, 4, 6, etc., all of the even natural numbers to this thing, uh, we would map 2 to 1, 4 to 2, 6 to 3, it seems like the thing that would work is just simply x goes to x over 2. Okay, that seems to work um, in mapping this set. Let's call this set here E. So that will map E over into um, this set here, which is just simply the natural numbers. And now what about the other one? How would we map this set over to this set? We want 1 to go to 0, 3 to go to 1, 5 to go to minus 2, 7 to go to minus 3. So if you ignore the minus signs for the moment and you just try to map 1 to 0, 3 to 1, 5 to 2, what you might do is just simply uh, say, look at this 3, subtract 1, and then divide by 2. If you subtract 1, you get 3 minus 1 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. 5 minus 1 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. 7 minus 1 is 6 divided by 2 is 3. Uh, and the 1 also works. 1 minus 1 divided by 2 is 0. So if we map um, x goes to just subtract 1 and divide by 2, that seems to map this set, not quite to this set, but this set without the minus signs. So we can then throw in a minus sign, and then I think it works. In other words, 1 minus x over 2. That seems to map this set. Let's call this set O. So that seems to map O into... This set here is really nothing more than z minus n. So that seems to map into z minus n. So these two seem um, pretty clear that we should be able to prove that these are bijections. And so I can map this piece of the natural numbers to this piece of the integers, this piece of the natural numbers to this piece of the integers, these two sets are disjoint, these two sets are disjoint, and so we can use that gluing theorem that we um, considered a while back to now create a single function from these two functions, and that will map this entire set into the entire set of integers. So that's the idea of the proof. So what we discovered is we should define E to be all the even natural numbers, O, all the odd natural numbers, and then um, 
e and n, uh, e uh, is, has the same cardinality as n because this function, given by x goes to x over 2, seems to be a bijection. That's what we discovered on the previous slide. And if we let O um, denote the set of odd, or well, here's O, then O has the same cardinality as z minus n because this function, x goes to 1 minus x over 2, is also a bijection. That seems to be what we would conjecture from our calculations on the previous slide. Now let me quote the theorem that we can use in order to um, allow us to conclude that z is denumerable. The theorem says that if you have four sets, a, b, c, and d, if a and b are disjoint, and c and d are disjoint, and if we know that a and c have the same cardinality, in other words, there's a bijection from a to c, and there's a bijection from b to d, then it's possible to find a bijection from the unions, from a union b into c union d. This was an exercise that we did earlier on in the course. So we're going to apply this theorem where we replace a by the set of even natural numbers, b by the set of odd natural numbers, c is the set of natural numbers, and d is the uh, complement in the set of integers of the set of natural numbers, and then we get exactly what we want. That gives us exactly the theorem that z is denumerable. Okay, so that's the idea of the proof. Why don't you see if you can uh, write it up in a formal way, and uh, when you come back you can compare your proof to mine. So here's my formal proof. We let E be, so I'm going to define everything. I don't assume that anything that I've done on the previous slide is known to the reader. Let E be the um, set of even natural numbers and O the set of odd natural numbers. And then I observe that they give a union, they give a partition of N, namely uh, E union O is equal to N and it's a disjoint union. Now I also want to observe that I can chop z up into two disjoint pieces by writing it like this. And now I'm going to indicate that I can map e bijectively to n and o bijectively to z minus n. Namely, I define g from e into n by x goes to x over 2, and I define h from o into z minus n by x goes to 1 minus x over 2. Then I merely state that they are both bijections, but I'm going to leave it for you as an exercise to prove, but I, I think it's a, it's a good exercise, but pretty elementary. So it follows from that that these two sets, E and N, have the same cardinality, and O and Z minus N have the same cardinality, and therefore by the theorem on the previous slide, if we take the unions, um, the union of E with O has the same cardinality as the union of N with Z minus N, and that just says that N and Z have the same cardinality. Well, the fact that Z has the same cardinality as the natural numbers is what it means to say that Z is denumerable, and so that completes the proof.